Hi, I'm Jennifer Peedham, director of uh, Sherpa and now my new film, Mountain. Um, I was approached by the Australian Chamber Orchestra actually to work on a collaboration um, that was designed originally to be just a concert performance with live imagery. Um, and it was a great opportunity to work with an orchestra I'd never made a film with them before. Um, but what I wanted to bring to it was to make it a standalone cinema piece as well. So this project really began um, in that way. So it's both, both a live performance with this Australian Chamber Orchestra and then the score that they've performed um, attached. And what I wanted to explore in this film, or I saw it as an opportunity to explore the nature of our fascination with mountains. You know, why is it that some of us are prepared to risk our lives for something that can't love us back? and everybody else thinks those people are crazy. And I thought that this was a really great opportunity to explore the space between those two ideas um, and, and try and bridge that understanding a little bit. I mean, it was actually probably the greatest challenge of this film was it was creating a relationship between the, the music um, and the imagery because the chamber orchestra have a subscriber base, they have a massive following in Australia and so there's always going to be an expectation that they have some large classical works which meant that we need to incorporate, needed to incorporate those into the film. Um, it was both a challenge and then utterly really rewarding ultimately when we found the right pieces of music. So the score, you know, has some Vivaldi, Chopin, Beethoven, Arvo Pert, um, all sorts of composers and Grieg as well. and. It, you know, as a filmmaker, it's, it's, it's amazing to be able to work with that kind of amazing level of music, but it's very hard. They're cumbersome pieces. They're often longer than the kind of music you would use in a normal film, um, but ultimately really rewarding. And then we also worked with the, the, um, the artistic director of the Chamber Orchestra, who's also a composer, so about 50% of the score is original composition. So the the... The narration is written by this um, wonderful British author called Robert McFarlane, um, who wrote a book that was really influential for me when I was in my 20s, trying to understand why I had this urge to be in the mountains. Um, it's called Mountains of the Mind. And so he wrote this, um, I approached him to write the narration track um, uh, for Mountain because I felt like it was, it, it was necessary to give the film, as the standalone film, a narrative arc. Um, and so the question as to who the composer was was always a really tricky one because the words are very poetic. They're, it was important that it never feel like a, you know, a nature documentary because it's not that. Um, it's a more impressionistic um, meditation, very visual kind of um, poetic, visually poetic film. And so the voice itself also needed to stand up to the Australian Chamber Orchestra. Um, so in, a, in and of itself, it needed to be like an instrument. Um, and I remember when we first heard Rich, um, uh, Willem Dafoe's recording um, of the narration, Richard Tongetti from the Australian Chamber Orchestra kind of visibly, you know, breathed a sigh of relief. He just said, it's incredible. It's like his voice is like a cello. It's another instrument in the film. And so the, the quality of the voice is really important, but it was also, it needed to feel authentic. So we needed to, you know, you needed to believe that this voice and this person could, was speaking from experience, could, you can imagine him in the mountains, you know. There are lots of amazing Australian actors, um, which is where I'm from, Geoffrey Rush, people like this. I couldn't imagine those people in the mountains. I had to be able to see this person in the mountains. And, and then um, Willem Dafoe is someone that to me, um, is an artistic risk taker and there's a lot of themes of risk in this film about the nature of risk and that seemed to really fit as well um, and so we sent him the film he he got it straight away and and he said yes so we were we were really lucky yeah I mean the brief to this film was incredibly broad it was you know it's called mountain which is sort of always a working title and it just stuck but to express what we wanted to express, we had to reach far and wide. We shot some of our own material. I'd also worked with Renan before on my previous feature, Sherpa. Um, and so we'd shot a lot of material together already in the Himalayas, which we were able to draw upon. Um, he also then opened up his incredible library of footage, which has, you know, 
amazing footage from all over the world and, and put us in touch with his other main collaborator, Sherpa's Cinema, who are the best ski mountain cinematographers, you know, in the world. They're incredible. So we had so much to draw on that it, it was at times overwhelming. Um, and then, but, you know, when you're creating a narrative arc, you need a diversity of footage. And so then at a certain point, we needed to reach further and find um, find new footage to fill those gaps. Um, so it really comes from a huge diversity of, of really talented cinematographers. I mean, there's always challenges working in the mountains. Um, I mean, I think specifically, and Renan's a better person to talk about this, but, you know, working with him, he's someone that never stops working. You know, when we're working together in the Himalayas, I'd hear his tent zip open at one o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking it's so cold I could not even dream of getting out of my sleeping bag at this point. And he's out climbing up some ridge to set off a time lapse and then climbing back up there at seven o'clock in the morning to collect it and see what he's got. I mean, and just in those situations, your fingers get so cold. Um, I mean, quite aside from the fact that where you're sleeping is on a glacier on ice, you know. So they're often really harsh conditions. We also shot in Niseko in Japan and we were staying in a beautiful lodge and then going out skiing in the day. And, and um, But I do remember one particular moment where Renan flew a drone into a tree and he had to climb up this incredibly tall tree with bare hands to retrieve the drone. But, you know, we also filmed together during the avalanche um, on Everest in 2014, which was, you know, a, a tremendously traumatic experience, actually, and very, very sad time to be there. Um, amongst the Sherpa community who are grieving. So, I mean, there's all there's a diversity of human experience in the mountains and, and you know, we've shared in, in a lot of that together. So I had, when I was kind of figuring out what I wanted to do, you know, in my 20s, I, I started working on adventure races, which led me to the mountains um, in New Zealand and then and then to the Himalayas. Um, and I just said yes to every opportunity. And so I, I wound up working as a climbing camera operator on Everest expeditions. Um, and so I became really familiar with the mountains um, and, and fell in love with them in that way. Um, but to me, it's, it's as much about the, the, the human story. I mean, Sherpa was very much a story about that community. It's a, sh a story about the wives and the children and, and the men and their culture and their religion as much as it is about mountaineering or adventure. So for me it's always the human narrative that drives my work and that's what I tried to bring to this film as well was it, that it be an observation of the human experience um, and what it is about these powerful you know mountains that captures our imagination. Um, so for me, it just kind of really happened by accident. I, you know, I just said, kept saying yes, yes, to different opportunities, which led to different films. And um, you know, before I knew it, I was somewhat of a mountain expert, which is probably why the Australian Chamber Orchestra approached me in the first place to work on this film. Um, but funnily enough, I, I actually don't think of myself as an adventure filmmaker. I, I, I'm. It's the human stories that I'm drawn to, and it just so happens that a lot of them, and my films have happened to be in these incredible environments with mountains as backdrops. Um, and my advice to filmmakers is, is to be tenacious, I think, um, is to really know what you want to say and why you want to say it, and, and, and could you say it in another way? Could you write a book? Could you? do some photography, because um, filmmaking is very hard. Um, but I think filmmaking and making a film is really about expressing an opinion or a particular view of the world. Um, and so I think going into a film, you need to know what that is. You know, what is your particular angle on the world? What's your, what is that burning passion that you have to express? And if you can find that, then I think, um, you know, the path will really open up.